In this video, we will be going over Chapter 7.4 on partial fractions. The goal of partial fractions is to take a rational function and expand or decompose it into simpler parts. This is like doing the reverse of adding fractions. It's kind of going backwards. So, the first step for decomposing partial fractions is to make sure that the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator. If it does, then the function is proper. If it doesn't, it is improper and we must divide. So, this means that we uh, will divide when the numerator degree is greater than or equal to the denominator's degree. Okay. So, once you have a proper function, you must factor the denominator. When you factor the denominator, you can tell if the factors are linear or quadratic. And depending on if the factors are linear or quadratic, it depends on how you set up the partial fractions. So, in the next few examples, I will be showing you how to set up the partial fractions depending on if they are linear or quadratic. Alright, so our first example is 11x plus 36 over 3x squared plus 17x minus 56. So, we can tell that it's proper because the denominator's degree is larger than the numerator's degree. So, we can factor the bottom and we get 11x plus 36 all over, well, if we factor the denominator, then we know that there must be a 3x and x in two of the factors. And then we know that we need two numbers to multiply to get 56, but add to get 5, sorry, add to get 17 with a 3x. So, what we can do is we can try adding an 8 in this factor, and then subtracting a 7 in that factor. But then when you multiply it all out and FOIL it, you realize it won't work. So, what you can do is flip-flop them, and then you should get 3x minus 7. An x plus 8. So if you foil it, foil it all out, it should equal 3x squared plus 17x minus 56. So when you look at these factors, you can tell that they are both linear. So since they are linear, what we must do is we must break the rational function into two separate fractions. So there should be a fraction for each factor. So what we will do is we will get one fraction with 3x minus 7 in it plus another fraction with x plus 8 in it. And then later on, we're, we want to solve for each one. So we are going to use constants a and b. So when we solve, we can get a rational function back into that and we will solve for what a and b equal. All right, so that was a linear, a distinct linear function. All right, so let's try another example. Okay, so here we get 4x squared plus 4x all over x cubed plus 2x squared. So right away, you can see that the bottom does factor. What you can do is you can take an x squared out of both parts. So you get x squared, and what you have left is x plus 2 
All right, so I can't factor any further. So we can set it equal. And now we see that we have two linear functions, two linear factors, and we see that this one, x squared, is repeating. So what we have to do for the repeating is make sure that each factor gets its own fraction. So this is going to look like x plus x squared plus x plus 2. All right, so what would we do if it was x to the 20th? If it was x to the 20th, then we would do, we would have 21 fractions. We would have x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, and these are all denominator fractions. And then the last one, of course, would be x plus 2. So whatever this is, there's a fraction for each part. So just like the other one, we put an a over that, a b, and a c for each part, because we want to solve for each fraction. OK. So let's try another one. All right, so this is one's going to be a repeated linear fraction as well. We can't um, factor it out anymore, so we can leave it like this. And we're going to see that we get four different fractions this time. So x is by itself again, because it's its own linear fraction or function factor, sorry. OK, and then we get x minus 1 plus x minus 1 squared plus x minus 1 cubed. See how for the linear um, factor you get one for each exponent? So for example, if it was x plus a, here I'll write it down here, x plus a to the m, here I'll actually put it in a different color. So this is like what we're doing. It's x plus a to the m. So this means that each m has its own partial fraction. So each of the m's gets its own fraction. So if m was 4, it would be x plus a, x plus a to the second, x plus a to the third, and x plus a to the fourth. And each one gets a constant over it. OK? So over each one, we can put an A, B, C, and a D. And then at the end, we'll learn how to solve for each one. OK. So now we can move on to the next problem. So this one's a little bit different than the others because it isn't a linear factor. It's a quadratic factor. Well, it will be at least once we factor it out. So because there's an x in each one, we can factor it a little bit further. And we will get, if you take an x out, you get x squared plus 3. OK, so we know this is a quadratic factor because there's still a squared in the factor, and we can't factor it any further. So what we are going to do is set it equal to, there will be two different fractions. So this one gets an x in the denominator, and we know it gets an x just like the other ones. It, it's by itself, so it gets the x. And then for the other one, we can't break it up, so we'll leave it as x squared plus 3 in the denominator. But because it's an 
irreducible quadratic, meaning it doesn't factor, it should get, well, this one's going to have an A at the top, but this one should get a BX plus C. Okay, so this is because we need a one degree in the numerator plus a constant. So this one's one degree less than X, and so we need this one, this fraction, to be BX because it's one degree less than X squared. Okay? And then we'll solve for it. Okay, so let's try another one that has a quadratic in it. Okay, so for this one, we don't need to factor any further, and there's going to be three parts, three different facts, I'm sorry, three different fact fractions, <laughs> three different partial prac. geez, I can't talk right now, three different partial fractions for each one. So, this one's linear, but this one is a quadratic, so this is how we split it up. We're going to set it equal to x plus 3 gets its own partial fraction, which we know because it's by itself, it'll get an a plus. Okay, so this one's a little bit different than the last one because it is a repeated quadratic. So see how there's a squared in the quadratic? So this means that just like the other one, we are going to put one underneath, x squared plus three, but because it's repeated, we're going to do what we did before and put x squared plus three squared. That's because each repeated factor needs repeated partial factors. So exactly what I described earlier. So just like the last problem, because it's quadratic, it's going to get a bx plus c on top, and this one's quadratic also, even though it's repeated. So we are going to do the same thing, and we are going to get cx plus e on top. All right, so that's how you do it, and in the next few lessons and videos, we will talk about how to solve for each constant.